Did you know about all these health metrics your Apple Watch collects? Here are some you may not know how to enable them and what they mean. Before I break down all this health data, if you want to keep up to date with Apple news, consider hitting that subscribe button. The Apple Watch is an incredibly powerful device that collects a lot more data than people realize. If well utilized, it can provide a lot of different insight into one's health, if you know about them to check them out. Most people know about things like workout tracking, but I want to touch on some of the less common. See if you know them all and let me know down below in the comments. I want to start with some of the more straightforward ones that people probably have heard of, like heart rate. You can take an ECG with your Apple Watch, but it also collects samples of your resting heart rate throughout the day. It takes these readings when you're still to help ensure that they're accurate. If your arm is moving around, it can't collect that data very well, or at least it won't be accurate data. If at any point it detects an irregularly high or low heart rate, it will send you a notification. You can also get an alert if it detects possible AFib. You can enable these alerts in the health app if they aren't already on by looking up the heart rate metric. Then there is SpO2, which is kind of a hot button topic right now. See, Apple used to offer blood oxygen testing on Apple Watch, but after the end of 2023, Apple was forced to remove it from Apple Watch due to a patent dispute. The good news here is that Apple didn't remove the hardware. Even new watches like the Series 10 presumably have the blood oxygen sensor. Once the patent dispute is settled, Apple could easily re-enable this feature straight away. I do think this will happen, it's just not clear when. For women, Apple Watch is helpful for cycle tracking. You can log symptoms like headaches, cramps, flow, and after a bit, it can even start to proactively notify you when your cycle is set to begin. Plus, recently, Apple updated it to be able to tell you retroactively when you may have been ovulating. You just need to be using cycle tracking with fertility predictions enabled. Did you know Apple Watch, and heck, even your iPhone, can help monitor your walking stability? Your gait can tell you a lot about your health, and Apple is able to monitor and characterize it over time. Apple says this can be used to track recovery from an injury, assess the risk of falling, and monitor the aging process. Kind of another reason why the Apple Watch is so powerful from literally children to older adults. With these notifications turned on, it can alert you when you aren't walking as steady as you used to. If you're older, this can give you a good idea of your health before you take a fall. Or if you have somebody monitoring your health, they can get alerted to your decreasing stability. Speaking of falls, Apple Watch can detect when you fall. This has been around for a while. When this happens, it will automatically call emergency services and alert your emergency contact if you're unresponsive. This data is also collected in the health app uh, under number of times fallen. It's kind of crazy how many metrics are collected by your Apple Watch, all to help you better your health and understand your health. While Apple does a lot, like showing your overnight vitals in the Vitals app, it doesn't provide a lot of actionable data. That's where something like Weltery can come in handy. It's an app that uses a massive amount of scientific data alongside AI to help you understand that data and give you actionable insight into your health. If you've followed any of my Apple Watch videos, you know the one thing I've been harping for Apple to add is stress metrics. Now you can use Weltery for that. Weltery uses cardiointervalography to analyze your health data for real-time metrics on your physiological state, including stress and energy levels. Your data is shown in these gorgeous graphs to help you better visualize your health. Plus, it offers you ways that can help stimulate weight loss, fight fatigue, and decrease your stress. I've been using Weltery for a bit now, and it feels like I've uncovered missing features on Apple Watch, and it's making a difference in my health. If you want to give it a shot yourself, download Weltery using the link in the description for a 40% discount on your annual subscription. Apple has made a big push recently into hearing health. AirPods Pro, for example, got all these hearing features to help protect your ears, to take a hearing test, and to even act as hearing aids. 
but it didn't start with AirPods. Apple was doing this kind of stuff on Apple Watch years before. Apple Watch uses its onboard microphone to listen to the audio levels around you and will automatically send you an alert if the sound around you has been loud for too long. There's even a noise app that you can use to measure the audio around you if you're ever curious. And those notifications can be set up and customized. If you wear your Apple Watch to bed, as I do, there are a bunch of additional metrics that it can collect. For example, your respiratory rate. It literally tracks your breathing while you sleep. It gives you your value as breaths per minute and it tracks it over time with ranges throughout the night. Because it's so sensitive, this data isn't collected while you're awake. So respiratory rate is only while you're sleeping. The big one for sleep though is sleep tracking itself. There is even a dedicated Apple Watch app where you can set everything up. Outside of sleep tracking, by the way, this is really nice because your Apple Watch can act as a gentle alarm for you in the morning and can vibrate and it'll turn off the watch face while you sleep so it doesn't wake you up. You can view your prior night's sleep and the various cycles in the sleep app on your Apple Watch or in the health app. If you wanna learn more about sleep tracking on your Apple Watch, because there is a lot to it, I did a whole dedicated video and you can find that at the link here. What's handy about viewing your sleep data on your iPhone is you can also see related data like your heart rate and respiratory rate. Recently, Apple bolstered sleep tracking by adding sleep apnea monitoring. This is supported on Apple Watch Series 9, Apple Watch Series 10, and Apple Watch Ultra 2 running watchOS 11. It's comparable to taking an at-home test without having to go see your doctor. I've done an, a legit at-home sleep apnea test, and while it was interesting uh, and didn't find anything wrong, sleep apnea can develop and change over time. So it's nice to have my Apple Watch monitoring me over time to alert me if it should ever change. Just because you had a test once doesn't mean you won't have sleep apnea sometime in the future. You can find this in the health app under breathing disturbances, because that's essentially what sleep apnea is. You stop breathing. Once more, if you want to learn more about this, I do have a whole dedicated video and I've linked it here. Finally, while you're sleeping, Apple Watch can monitor your body temperature. Full values are stored in the health app by going to wrist temperature, then going to the bottom and tapping show all data. Apple will notify you if this goes outside the norm, possibly hinting at illness or other factors. I've shown you how you can find all the sleep data, but Apple did make it a bit easier to comprehend recently with a whole dedicated app. It's called the Vitals app on your Apple Watch and it shows you all your data from the past night, heart rate, respiratory rate, temperature, SpO2, and sleep duration. If you don't support SpO2, it won't show in the app. If any of them are irregular, you'll get an alert. Even recently, I went to bed fine, and when I woke up, my watch told me I had high temperature and my breathing was increased. By that afternoon, I felt awful. If you get that alert, you can try to be proactive, or at least be aware you may be coming down with something. We're not done with all this health data though. I know a lot of people track their move ring during the day, but funny enough, I've had several people ask why Apple Watch doesn't just track my steps like a pedometer. Guess what? It does. It tracks that, but Apple prefers to show you the move ring as it's a more holistic view of your daily calorie spend and isn't as fixated on just steps. If you're worried about your heart fitness, you should check out the VO2 max values. This is a measurement of your cardio fitness and can be increased by walks, runs, hikes, and other cardio exercises. If it's too low, based on your age and gender, Apple will alert you so you can work to improve it. Here's a neat one. You know how things like your phone or your Mac or your Apple Watch will automatically adjust the brightness based on the light? Well, it's doing that using an ambient light sensor to detect this. Apple uses that same sensor to track how long you spend in daylight. Yeah, daylight is crucial for absorbing essential vitamins and has shown numerous mental and physical health benefits. It can help reduce eye strain. You can absorb vitamin D and more. Last couple to mention here, stairs climbed. 
using the altimeter in Apple Watch, it can detect you going up and down stairs. This is pretty neat to see. It'll even tell you how many flights you climbed each day. Plus, it can record your stair up or stair down speeds. This is a common metric that can test your health, and lower values here could be a sign of worsening health conditions. Honestly, to me, it's just so impressive what Apple Watch can do. And if you pay attention to these metrics, how much of an impact it can make on you. The crazy thing is, this isn't even all Apple Watch can track. There's so many more that I didn't even touch on in this video. Water temperature, how often you wash your hands and for how long, how long you stand, physical effort, and more. Let me know how many of these you were aware of down below in the comments. And no lying, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.